Hello. Good evening. I hope that everyone is, uh, I don't know, what does Pastor John say, yet blessed in the Lord. Amen. You're making good choices. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. It is time for Bible study. We are going to start with the 91st Psalm. Get your Bible, just in case. Let's go. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, and the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Hallelujah. Canopy of our protection, which we declare over our lives every day. Mm -hmm. So no matter what we face, we know that we're covered. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. We are going to get started with a quick prayer. All right. All right. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to gather together again, to learn more about how you would have us to live our lives, to um, be with people of like-minded faith to hear your word, to have the seeds planted within our hearts that would take root and produce righteous fruit in our lives. We pray that you would give us listening ears and a tender heart to receive all that you have for us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Tonight, our topic is glory gaze. Okay. I think that would be a nice, you know, Hashtag, as Pastor John would say. Somebody hashtag that in the comments. Hashtag glory gaze. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Our first scripture. It's a really quick one. Acts chapter 7, verse 55. Uh -huh. And it reads. And it reads. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Now, that, if you're familiar with Acts, has a whole lot of backstory, a whole lot going on to that. But looking more deeply into that verse, let's see, what version did I just read? The um, NIV. Mine it says, says hmm? Mine says, but he... Stephen? Mm -hmm. No, just he. Okay. Well, they was talking about Stephen. They must have mentioned his name in a previous verse in your version. <gasps> but it says, he gazed, looked intently. Mm -hmm. And that is, when you look intently, you direct your gaze. It's not just kind of something you catch out of your peripheral. Mm -hmm. You look steadily. That's what we want to do. We want a glory gaze. We yes. want to be... <laughs> Steadily, intensely looking at God. Huh? Uh -huh. And the glory mentioned there is the visible glory of God which surrounds and proclaims God's near presence. And we'll get back into how that verse, what was all going on when Stephen saw the glory. Uh -huh. All right. And our next verse is James 4 and 8. 
and it reads one moment please come near to god and he will come near to you well we're gonna read a a mm -hmm. come near to god or the king james says dad would always correct Mm -hmm. says draw, draw near high. draw nigh uh -huh. draw near and he will draw near to you <laughs> amen all right so what does this all have to do with having a glory gaze i'm glad you asked <laughs> there are many many things vying for our attention these days mm -hmm. a lot of people has have said that we're in some of the most technologically advanced days ever but also the most isolated people have never been more connected while being more separate mm -hmm. that's true because you can have 800 friends on facebook on instagram followers on TikTok, and kill yourself because you have not had any actual human interaction mm -hmm. just think about that so we know that the enemy makes sure that we are inundated with all these voices and mm -hmm. inputs and distractions uh, list in the comments, you guys. What are some things that are trying to get our attention on a daily basis? Spouse, TV, social media. Uh, work. In the back there. Okay. Children. Yes. Work. Oh, yes. Okay. So, okay. church, family, work, spouse, kids, and things that can just you worrying about it, and you don't even really have anything to do with it. Mm -hmm. The economy, the government the world at large diseases diseases mm -hmm. the goals that you want to hit the mistakes you've made in your past the things you hope to have in the future just mm -hmm. imagine that you're plagued by the past and the future, and the future. that's a lot on one person's mind mm -hmm. so and okay. what we want to do is be intentional just like that look intently mm -hmm. we don't want god to be just somebody, something we turn to mm -hmm. here and there. We want to set our gaze that way mm -hmm. as those things are coming in from the left, from the right, just up, down, all around us. We don't want to let those things in because imagine that they're arrows and you could have a shield where, all right, I'm not even going to let those things get to me. I'm going to keep my focus or you're turning every which way and boom, boom, they're hitting you, they're getting you. Mm -hmm. We don't want that, amen? Amen. So we want to be intentional about fixing our focus on the right things and especially on God. Amen. And an example of that we have from the Word is Matthew chapter 14. We're not going to read all of it. Verses 22 and 33 talks about when Jesus walked on water mm -hmm. and then Peter walked on water. Mm -hmm. can you imagine we see that it says peter when peter saw the wind and the waves he began to sink peter was doing something so amazingly extraordinary mm -hmm. that it seems like if i mean you know we we know the end of the story in hindsight so everything seems like well i don't know why he did that all he had to do was keep focusing on jesus mm -hmm. but when you're doing something that's different, that's out of the ordinary, that's special, seems like you take extra care. Like, okay, I'm going to be real careful. Like, imagine it's my first time flying a plane. I'm a pilot. I want to be a pilot, but it's my first time flying a plane. Seem like you're not going to be able to rip my eyes off of those instruments. Or I'm going to keep looking up. Looking at, I'm going to be super duper focused on the things that are going to help me keep this plane in the air. Peter was walking on water, and he got distracted by the waves and the wind. Mm -hmm. And imagine how easy it is for us to get distracted when all we're doing is getting up every day, go to work, do some laundry, make some food, try to hang out with the family, try to do something to entertain ourselves, just mm -hmm. those mundane things, you know. If Peter, who was doing something that, like, look, he shouldn't even have stepped out of the boat without looking at Jesus, but then as he's out there in the water, he mm -hmm. could get distracted. Like, the enemy is trying to do that and so much more to us mm -hmm. because he wants you to take these little things like, okay, well, I won't look away from God long. I just need to glance over here real quick. Just make sure I just I'm need okay. to. Right, right. <laughs> but I'm just going to see how far away I am from the boat. So if I need to reach mm -hmm. back and, you know, grab it. Yes. We have to be intentional about fixing our eyes on Jesus. Uh -huh. We cannot put God in a box. And I heard a um uh in a sermon one time where 
they said people a lot of times will put God in one of those uh, emergency bo boxes where break glass in case of emergency. Mm -hmm. so I can kind of see God when I walk past. So, you know, I know he's there. But when something goes wrong that I don't think I can handle myself, oh, then I'm where, where the hammer at. God, I need you. This is something yeah. only you can handle. But God has been sort of out of sight, out of mind all the rest of this time. Everything's going pretty good. My job's all right. My kid's all right. My car's working. You know, I can pay my bills. God, you stay over there in your, your space. When I need you, I will let you know. But that's not having the glory gaze yeah that's being focused on all these other things and thinking that you can handle it yourself also mm -hmm. heard um i think it was sunday in a sermon where the speaker said that um whenever we are just trying to handle things on our own we're taking on weight that we weren't meant to, mm -hmm. hand, to hold we, we to can't carry. hold mm -hmm. it's meant for god do you mm -hmm. think that you could support the weight of something that God is supposed to carry? Mm -hmm. There's no way. We can't do that. We have to take God out of the box that we try to put him in. Don't have that whole out of sight, out of mind, I'll let you know when I need you sort of relationship. We have to be intentional. Mm -hmm. Amen. We're looking yeah. for the glory gaze like Stephen. Like now, let's go back to that story in Acts. Stephen was in the midst of getting stoned in verse seven, uh, 55 in chapter 7. He was not walking down the street and all of a sudden saw a beautiful image of the Lord. Nah, he was in the middle of being killed right at that moment when the Lord allowed him to set his gaze into heaven mm -hmm. and be so consumed and looking intently at that he wasn't even worried about the crowd yelling, throwing mm -hmm. rocks. He was looking at Jesus. And I know a lot of times, you know, we think that our situations are so horrible. Thankfully, hopefully we're not facing being stoned. But when we're facing this, it seems like stuff is just coming at us left and right. Because people say stuff like, man, if it's not one thing, it's, it's another. another. Mm -hmm. I don't ever say that because I don't want it to be one thing right. or the other. I want nothing. Amen. You know, I won't go through what the Lord would have me to go through in order to grow in him and mature spiritually. Mm -hmm. But that's it. I don't want to just be inviting extra nonsense Amen. into my life. Amen. Mm -hmm. that's cool. So... <laughs> We want to be able to have the glory gaze in the midst of every trial, in the midst of everything that comes at us. Mm -hmm. Because there are a lot of people we know, maybe not personally, but one little thing happens and their world falls apart. Like mm -hmm. people that aren't even married. Let's say somebody break up with their boyfriend. All of a sudden they don't want to live. They don't want to eat. They just, uh... And you, it wasn't even a committed marriage, long-term relationship. You've been dating for two weeks. Get your life together. You need a glory gaze. Yes, fix your focus. <laughs> fix your focus, right? Like, what is going on? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's stuff that it happens to everybody all the time. And a lot of times we don't take stuff seriously till it happens to us. You know, mm -hmm. but even if you're the one who's in the midst of that situation, if you've got your gaze fixed, Mm -hmm. on the right thing you can get through that kind of stuff it doesn't have to totally upset your whole entire existence right you can continue on amen and yeah. i actually heard in another sermon on <laughs> sunday i listen to a lot of sermons now that everybody's online but he said that doubt is actually more illogical than having faith and trust in god when you think about it as a believer if you look back over all that God has done for you, brought you through, brought you out of, delivered you from, stuff that you didn't know you had missed out on that you found out later, man, I'm glad I didn't go on that trip. Man, I'm glad that dude never called me back. Ooh, I'm glad she didn't text me. Mm -hmm. it, when we think about that, it just doesn't make sense to face something now and be like, oh, Lord, I don't know mm -hmm. if you can handle well, this one. Do. This is a tough one. Really? Really? You question whether or not God can handle this new nonsense in your life. And we always have to remember, things may be a surprise to us. It's never a surprise to God. Mm -hmm. And when we have the glory gaze, we can say, okay, God, I know I wasn't ready for this. I'm not even sure why I have to go through this, but I know you got me. I know you've had me. I know all the things that you've done for me in the past, and I'm going to trust you. 
Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes. I'd like to add to that. Yes. Um, I find that whenever we're going through stuff, that's a great time to, of course, pray. You know, pray without ceasing. Hallelujah. But you also need to take the opportunity to listen to Christian music. Okay, I know a lot of people think, you know, it's okay. I'm not saying you're going to hell or anything, you know, for listening to secular music. What I am saying is if you're already going through something, your mind isn't quite right, you know what I mean? You're down, you're struggling. Why would you add to it by, you know, listening to nonsense? You know, they're cursing and talking about, you know, women, but not calling them that name. <laughs> you know, and all the things when you could listen to somebody's testimony that's given through a song, just like a uh, Thai tributes. If you've done it before, you can do it again. You know what I mean? You can it's listen to, uh, it's Todd Delaney literally singing the Bible. Was yes, it yeah. Psalm 18? Psalm 18 and it's yeah. good. Like literally you can be encouraged just by listening to Christian music. Amen. And having a heart to receive. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, I had a, I had a thought in while you're talking, but oh oh yeah yeah yeah, that goes back to putting God in a box. When we're facing these tough decisions, that's when we want to text everybody, pray for me, and all this other stuff. And well, maybe Beyonce ain't gonna get me through this. Maybe I should right. listen to some worship music. You get up, but God. your input, <laughs> what you've been putting in all this time is what comes out of you when the squeeze is on. I think mm -hmm. Pastor Pat did a um either Bible study or sermon like on that. The uh in Psalm one it talks about we want to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That tree that's planted by water doesn't have to wait until the rain comes to be nourished. Mm -hmm. It's got the roots down deep where it can always drink from the river. But imagine that tree is just sitting on the surface, never bothering to get those roots down deep where it can access the water. The times where we think everything's all right, everything's going good, that's the time we need to dig in deep. So when the wind starts blowing, the storm starts coming, we can stand firm. That's not when we need, oh, oh Lord, what am I going to do? Now nah, that's too late. That's like, you know, you already even got pushed out the plane and you're trying to put your life jacket on. Nah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you know you're going to have to jump anyway, the Bible tells us the troubles and trials will come. Persecution will come. Don't be shocked. Mm -hmm. Don't be surprised. Be prepared. Yes. Amen? Amen? So that input that we're always talking about, the movies we watch, the music we listen to, the, the we're allowing into our ear gates, our eye gates, those things, it all can shift our focus because I personally know that there's some stuff that I've watched that I wouldn't want to watch with my dad next to me. I wouldn't want to watch it with him in the house just in case he came in the room. Mm -hmm. And that's my earthly father. Imagine Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus is with me. And I'm like, Lord, we're just going to watch this. It's only rated R. It's not. It doesn't have a whole lot, Lord. It's it's funny though it's so mm -hmm. funny jesus <laughs> can you imagine or uh, that's one of those times when we're like okay lord i'm gonna sit you over here you be out in the hallway i'm gonna be in the living room and our our gaze ain't right we're not yes lord you know mm -hmm. speak to my heart whatever you want to say to me through this uh, film that i am partaking in <laughs> mm -hmm. we we got to be careful about that stuff because it's it's getting in our roots are digging in somewhere if it's not digging into where we're going to be nourished spiritually mm -hmm. it's the wrong thing so in closing <laughs> no i'm gonna be like that i'm just getting started i have three four points mm -hmm. point number one uh-huh well first i have to say well how do we get that glory gaze I'm, I'm glad, glad you asked, asked me that. <laughs> Number one, practice. Practice, uh-huh. That's it. That's point number one, oh. practice. <laughs> now, let me expound on that. We already talked about uh, we have to be intentional. Things that you are intentional about, doesn't matter how you feel. It doesn't matter what's going on. It's something that is an act of your will. Mm -hmm. When it's an act of your will, that means... I can do it if I want to, mm -hmm. if I make myself. A lot of people, oh, I would do this. I just don't have no discipline. And you won't. You mm -hmm. just, you, you won't. Whatever you're trying to do is not going to happen because you are already saying, 
I will not make myself do this. Mm -hmm. And for that, we're going to look at, at scripture. David, David in Psalm. To me, David wrote some of the most relatable stuff in mm -hmm. the Bible. Because David was not playing about his enemies. David was honest when he felt like murdering someone. Then he mm -hmm. would be like, okay, Lord, you forgave me. <laughs> he would bring it back in. But yeah. his honest feelings are in there. And in Psalm 34 and 1, Psalm 103, he says, I will bless the Lord. He didn't say, I feel like blessing, blessing the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to think about all the reasons. I, he said, I will. That means he made himself bless the Lord. Mm -hmm. It is another song. You can listen to that. Make yourself. And Psalm 103, verses 1 and 2. Verse 2 doesn't just say about... I will. It says, bless the Lord, oh my soul. He's telling his soul, bless the Lord. Mm -hmm. Just force it. it. And then it says, and forget not all his, his benefits. benefits. Mm -hmm. they, that's just like, imagine you work at a job and you get health insurance, but forgot about it. So you go into the doctor when you have to and paying out of pocket. Would that not be ridiculous? Mm -hmm. yes. We are children of God. And serving God comes with so many benefits that we don't always access because we forget. We don't focus on the right things. And then we also try to handle stuff in mm -hmm. our own power. Now, if I didn't have the money to pay for those uh, appointments, I'd be like, what kind of insurance I got? Mm -hmm. Again, that's like, okay, I do need God, so let me, let me call on him. Yes. You know, we don't want to do that. We want to be intentional and we want to make ourselves adjust our focus continually until it becomes easier and easier or put your flesh under subjection yeah like die yeah mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's a very well-known saying mm -hmm. practice makes perfect perfect yes mm -hmm. but that is not necessarily true yes the, practice makes repetition no Mm -mm. The real saying is <laughs> practice makes permanent. Mm. Whatever you continue to do over and over and over, whether you're doing it right or doing it wrong, it's going to become a permanent thing. Because imagine if we keep saying the 91st Psalm every service, every twice a week, and we say, he that dwells in the stinking place of the Most High like, what? Stinking? Has it always been stinking? Or is it, he that dwelleth in the secret? No, wait, who's been saying stinking? It's, if we just like, okay, well, she said stinking, it must be stinking. He that dwelleth in the stinking place of the Most High, we say it every week, over and over. Some new person comes in, they hear us. He that dwelleth in the stinking mm -hmm. place of the Most High. And then we're practicing it. We're getting it mm -hmm. done every week, but we're doing it just as wrong as we could be. Mm -hmm. yeah. Practice makes practice permanent mm -hmm. we want to make permanent in our lives the glory gaze Amen. and it has a little, <laughs> little gesture there with it practice makes permanent we want to continue over and over mm -hmm. intentionally changing our gaze we already talked about the stuff is going to come to get our, uh, our attention we're not always going to be able to fight it off. Sometimes we're going to look to the left. Sometimes we're going to look to the right. But if we intentionally say, oh, you know what? Okay, I let that get, get hold of my attention. God, forgive me. Help me mm -hmm. to put my eyes on you. We'll be able to do it easier and easier. We'll be able to reject those things that come and try to pull our attention away as we practice. Point number one. Number two, rehearse. Practice and rehearse sound very similar, mm -hmm. <laughs> but as we talked about in Psalms, you won't forget his benefits or his glory if you're constantly replaying it over and over mm -hmm. in your head. You know, there are some things that we give so much time and energy to, mm -hmm. and I'm putting myself in there because I know I will have a, a whole other conversation in the shower that mm -hmm. I'm like, oh man, if he had said this, then I would have said that, and I would have, <laughs> and then I think of that. And I'm just giving that old nonsense conversation mm -hmm. more time and space in my head. <laughs> and uh, I read something that said that complaining was like vomiting. 
you might feel better after it, but nobody else does. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, that's no, good. nobody wants to hear that, see that, and whenever you keep complaining, you're giving that situation whatever it is that made you upset, mm-hmm. made you mad, hurt your feelings. You're giving it more power. So if we're gonna be rehearsing something over and over again. Why not let it be the glory of God? Why not let it be something that's going to get our gaze back on Jesus? And that goes back to what Shayla was saying about the music and stuff like that. If I'm already mad at an ex, I don't need to put on that angry ex music. Uh You know, Mary J or I don't know if she's even still popular. But, you know, whoever you listen to (laughs) about busting out tires and windows in cars and how dare he and setting stuff on fire. That ain't going to help. You need to listen to something to get your glory gaze back. The glory back. Come on. <laughs> Amen. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we got to really think about what am I allowing to take up space in my head? Because mm-hmm. I personally have been kind of overwhelmed with work lately. Mm-hmm. It has been just so busy till I'm like, I got a headache, got my stomach upset. And I'm, okay, I can't let my job kill me. Because they're going to say, oh, Siobhan died. I'm like, let's get somebody in here. Can we mm-hmm. Can we fill her seat? And they're going to keep on going about their lives. Meanwhile, I'm, <coughs> they got me. Mm-hmm. That's ridiculous. I'm letting that stuff take up space where it doesn't need to be. I need to be focused Amen. on the glory. Huh? Come on. Amen. <laughs> All right. That was point number two. Rehearse. Rehearse and practice are two different things. Mm-hmm. We want to keep going over it over and over and over in our heads. And, oh, I had two other scriptures for that. We're not going to read them now, but go back in your time and read them. Joshua 1 and 8, that's about rehearsing. No matter what you're doing, that's meditating on the glory of God. Oh, did you have that? Yeah. What does Joshua 1 8 say, sister? This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayst. Observe to do according to all that is written therein. For when, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. That is a life verse right there. Yes. A whole entire life verse. Mm-hmm. Basically two things. Meditate on the word, then you'll be successful. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on. Meditate. Bishop uh, Holcomb has said it in in a message before that that's just in me sit and quietly think it means to mutter to mm-hmm. say it over and over when you do that with the word of god how can your gaze not be fixed on yes. the right thing that's when you know you can be in the right zone mm-hmm. sort of like a steven situation his mind was in the right place someone uh, could walk up to you at your job slap mm-hmm. you in the face and you're gonna be like wow okay mm-hmm. but you're not gonna go just like oh you don't know me <laughs> you just start losing your mind. You can be like, okay, Lord, uh, mm-hmm. this is happening for a reason. I want to learn. I want to come out of this better on the other side. I want to mm-hmm. have good success. What are we doing here? How can I handle this in a way that brings you glory, that mm-hmm. represents you well? And the other verse I had for that was Romans 10 and 17. That says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word of God. Come on. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I have said it before. Let's see who remembers. Say it in the comments if you know. You are wired to believe what? I don't know. Why don't I just tell you? Why Your own you? voice. Oh, amen. I said it. Come on, guys. You've been here. You are wired to believe your own voice. That muttering we were just talking about, the meditating on the word, Mm -hmm. the listening to gospel music, singing it, that is how faith is built. Faith comes by hearing. You might as well get your voice in there. Mm -hmm. You're wired to believe your own voice. So what are you saying to you about you? What are you saying about your life, your job, your family, whatever. Not abundance of the heart. Say mm-hmm. what the word says. That yes. will help you to get the glory gaze. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Point number three. Rejoice. Rejoice. Don't wait for the big victories mm-hmm. to celebrate. But we have to take the time to see God's hand in what he's doing right Mm -hmm. now. What's a big celebration for somebody else Mm -hmm. might not be a big celebration for you. 
what somebody else will dance all over the church for. You might have it every single day and it's not a big deal. Doesn't matter. You know what God is doing in your heart, in your life, in all of your different circumstances. Rejoice now. That is mm -hmm. one way to keep your gaze fixed on the right thing. Because if you're taking the little things for granted, mm -hmm. for one, there's no little things. The fact that you're inhaling and exhaling is a big thing. Amen. Everybody ain't able. Well, think about it. Somebody's hooked up to a machine right now that is helping them do the very thing that you're able to do without, without any thinking. thought. Mm -hmm. Come on. Some people get up every day, drive to work. Somebody else gets up every day, bums a ride or catches a bus. But last week they got a car and this week they got up to drive to work. Mm -hmm. And it was a huge deal. Like they might have sat in the car. Right. Smelling it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Rubbing the steering wheel. Oh, oh Lord, mm -hmm. thank you. Meanwhile, you be in the car. Oh, <laughs> you got to go to work again. <laughs> it may have been me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I appreciate the car, but I didn't really want to go to work. <laughs> but we had to celebrate all along the way. God's yes. hand is in everything, everything that we're doing. Everything we're experiencing, good, bad, ugly, mm -hmm. whatever. God mm -hmm. is there. He's with us. And we need to celebrate those things. Nobody but you and God truly knows what those victories mean. Mm -hmm. They may look small and insignificant to somebody else, but you know what it costs. You know what you had to go through to get to this point. Mm -hmm. That's going to help you gaze. Because yes. you're like, man, whew, look at me. Look at where I am today. I, I did not want to talk about my job, and now I would actually refer the company to somebody else. Mm. <laughs> Imagine that. I'm not saying me, but you know, that was an example. <laughs> I like my job very much. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, only, like I said, only you and God know what it took for you to walk out the steps that you're walking right now. Nobody else is in your shoes. No mm -hmm. one else has had your exact same experiences, so no one else... Is seeing it like you are. Don't let other people tell you what your victories are or how to celebrate them. Mm -hmm. You have a reason to rejoice, and it will help you to keep your gaze on the right thing. Yes. Yeah. And finally, point number four, repeat. Basically, it was wash, rinse, repeat. Mm -hmm. Okay? You practice, you rehearse, you rejoice, and you do it all again. Mm -hmm. Do it every day. If that doesn't work for you, try every hour. If that doesn't work, try every minute. Are you going to get it right every single time? Are you going to just from now on, I'm impervious to distractions from the devil. <laughs> Good for you if you are. I'm not there yet, but hey, glory. You got that whole armor of God. Every fiery dart of the enemy, you just batting them away like it ain't no thing. Good for you. Keep on doing it. Repeat. Mm -hmm. As needed, you think about, again, okay, what has God already done for me? Like, okay, this isn't the best situation I'm in. I wish COVID was never even a thing. I don't want to hear nothing else about a lockdown. I don't want to have to homeschool my kids, blah, 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 whatever it may be. Okay, I got off track for a minute, God. You gave me these kids. God, mm -hmm. you gave me this job and allowed me to work from home. God, you protected me from COVID. Maybe I got it and, and I was, uh, what is it, recovered. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. God's got you. Amen. And if you happen to get off track here or there, start over. You mess up, you get up, you do it again. Mm -hmm. We have reasons to keep our focus and our gaze on Jesus. Amen. The glory gaze. The huh? glory gaze. Mm -hmm. When, <clears throat> excuse me, I just heard another quote that I just started right there and stopped, but it says, <laughs> When you get thrilled by the word, that's when it can begin to work for you. Hmm. So just imagine, instead of seeing, studying the word, listening to gospel music, all that kind of stuff as a chore or just a task that you need to mark off. And Well, I want to go to heaven, so let me get my 15-minute quiet time in today. Mm -hmm. Instead, you're like, man, I can't wait to see what God's going to reveal to me in his word. And I was just watching a friend's Bible study and... He's actually been uh, pastoring for 
few years now. And he was like, I'm kind of embarrassed to admit this, but I was reading a scripture like not too long ago and I finally understood what it meant. This is what this meant. This all, I've read this scripture a billion times. Now imagine when he's going to be like, man, what else is the Lord going to show me? I've been reading this for years. I know our family used to do a thing where we did a Bible plan, listening to the Bible um, together every year. And I swear every year there's something I act like I ain't never heard before. Mm -hmm. like, how long has that been in the Bible? <laughs> like, did y'all know it said this? Like, this is in here. Unicorns in there. <laughs> <laughs> so God is always showing us something. Mm -hmm. That that repeat, it doesn't mean it's going to get monotonous and make yourself do it. Not the intentional me. I want to do it. I want to hear what God is speaking to me. I want to have the glory gaze. I want to keep the right kind of input mm -hmm. so that I can have the right output. I want to get my roots down deep so mm -hmm. that I can be getting the right nourishment when the storm comes. What was that thrill statement you made? When you get thrilled by the word, that's when it can begin to work for you. That is not a direct quote. That is a quote of a quote. <laughs> I think, uh, I forget what his name is, Haken, Haken. Pastor Hakey in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Rama Bible Church School. When you get thrilled by the word, you can begin to... It can begin to work for you. Oh, man. It can begin to work for you. <laughs> Amen. So what I thought about during your lesson is uh, the girl who wrote the book, Gay Girl, Good God. Mm -hmm. uh, what's Jackie her name? Hill Jackie Perry. something? Yes. So Jackie Hill Perry Read was... That. It's a good book. Um, maybe on a show or something, telling her story, you know, about how God delivered her from, you know, the the sin of homosexuality. That's a demon, you know what I'm saying? And, but, you know, she still looks, sexuality. you know, a little, you know. Amen. Is there a point <laughs> that we're getting to? Yes. The point is she could allow herself to be distracted by the comments and you know the things that people just will typically say you know just like me how i'm trying to describe it and i could inadvertently you know upset her or somebody else you know and that's just my description but for her she had to deal with christians christ-like people saying uh-uh that girl ain't changed look her you see the way she walked you hear her no but because she has her glory gaze she knows that I have been delivered. She admits that, you know, we all sin. We all have something that we struggle with. So, yes, that past life is going to be something she struggles with, but she has fixed her focus. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we also should strive to do because no sin is greater than the other. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's another big part of having our glory gaze is knowing who we are in Christ. Mm -hmm. Stephen was being accused of some nonsense when he was killed and was able to focus in on seeing Jesus in heaven. But he wasn't uh, trying to defend himself. He gave them the whole book of the law before yeah, they stoned him. You read mm -hmm. that testimony in Acts chapter 7. Stephen went in from the beginning. He's like, started with Abraham. He was just going. <laughs> Uh, another quote I just heard on that same Bible study. <laughs> he said, if you're not impressed with who you are in God, you haven't looked at uh, in the mirror oh, of the word lately. That's good. You should be impressed, not only, well, not at all by who you are personally, but <laughs> what God is doing in you, through you, mm -hmm. who you are in him. Because Everybody else might not know, but you know what you a know. piece of work you are. Mm -hmm. You know what a mess <laughs> you could be mm -hmm. if it wasn't for God. That is one thing that will help us keep our glory gaze. Yeah, yeah. We have to know who we are in God and what we are capable of mm -hmm. through his power. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Jilla, would you pray us out? Okay. Thank you. Dear God, thank you for allowing us to gather again tonight. Father God, thank you for keeping us safe throughout the rest of the week. Thank you for Pastor Siobhan's message, giving us the boost, the encouragement that some of us needed to get through this week. Father God, thank you for allowing us to stay closer to you and for getting closer to you through this message. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Everybody have a great week. Make, Make great choices. choices. Bye.